Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the post story and that you found something provocative or interesting in the slate interpretation uh, of that story. I do think that the socioeconomic component of our current pandemic is something that uh, is getting some attention and something that we do need to pay attention to because it says uh, a lot about kind of where we are as a society and uh, some of the inequities I think that we're facing uh, as we deal with this pandemic. So I think it's helpful to bring that out through that reading of, of the Poe tale. And really, at this point so far, we've really looked at allegories, we've looked at the use of pandemics in allegories or allegorical tales as a way to construct meaning. And that is um, really what allegory tries to do. It takes a phenomenon such as a uh, plague or some kind of pandemic and uses it as the phenomenon around which to make a rhetorical point. And then we see that through history. And I, as I mentioned earlier, that's one of the real strengths of uh, a pandemic or a plague. It does work pretty well as a plot device in an allegorical narrative. At this point though, I think we need to kind of transition and start to address the uh, title of this week's presentation, which is grappling with absurdity. Because honestly, I think when we're in the midst of a pandemic as we are now, it's not quite as easy to find meaning as uh, we might as we're reading a, a work of fiction. Uh, that might be based on a pandemic or uh, you know, tries to use a pandemic as uh, a means of creating meaning. When we're in the middle of this, as we are now, I think a lot of things are called into question. A lot of those structures that we have in our lives that help give our lives meaning are disrupted. You think about the fact that you know, we don't really have access to friends and support networks the way that we once did. We don't have access to places of worship uh, as we are used to having them. In some cases, we're separated from family. Uh, we may not have work at this point. Uh, school is called into question. So these are the things that tend to anchor our lives. And with the pandemic, they are uh, taken from us. And we don't know at this point when we're going to get them back, if we're going to get them back, and in what what form will have those things. So this really, for most of us regular human beings, raises a host of uncomfortable questions, things that we might not want to deal with, but have to in this current situation. So we have two things going on. One is, you know, uh, a pandemic makes a great way to create meaning through literature, but at the same time, living in a pandemic calls into question all those structures of meaning that we tend to have in our own lives. It's probably not a surprise then that if we think back to the Boccaccio um, example that we used earlier, you know, when he was writing in a pandemic and didn't try to make meaning out of that pandemic. Rather, he used it as a, a means to create stories that were diversionary, that were oftentimes celebratory of the human condition, um, but certainly didn't really try to make sense of the Black Death itself. So when we think about these types of things, I think we naturally are drawn into uh, the realm of philosophical absurdism, which is, um, a way of thinking about the world that's very different from the meaning-making side of things that we've been talking about thus far. Uh, in an absurd world, we are faced with kind of a duality, an uncomfortable dance between humankind's desire for meaning, our craving for meaning, really, and our, our constant efforts to make meaning out of things. You know, think about your, your own attempts or my own attempts to look at our lives and to order them in some kind of narrative fashion so that things make sense, right? We take all the various things that happen to us and we construct an orderly, meaningful narrative out of those events so that we can feel good about things, so that we understand, so that it makes logical sense to us. But the uh, absurdist philosophers would say that, you know, that really is a fiction. That's all it is, is a fiction because uh, life really does not provide us with those structures of meaning. It doesn't, we don't get it through religion for them. We don't get it through 
power structures, there's really no sense in, in which things necessarily make sense for a, an absurdist. Um, a great exemplar of that type of philosophy, that type of thinking is Franz Kafka. Uh, Kafka was a, a Czech writer writing in German. And if you're familiar with his work, um, you will recognize that sense of absurdity in it. If you think about a work such as uh, The Trial or The Castle, his two, two great novels, or his uh, novella, The Metamorphosis, where the main character is transformed into a, a giant vermin and has to deal with that. I've also included in the readings for this week two short works from Kafka that are, I think, good examples of, of what I'm talking about here. In the parable before the law, we have uh, a man who sets out on a long trek to get access to the law, but he is denied that. He has to sit in front of a door that he finds out ultimately was meant only for him, but he can never get through it. Similarly, we have the, the parable the imperial message, which tells the story of the inability to get meaning, right? Um, the, the, the receiver of the message never gets it. And again, is kind of uh, destined to, to wait there in an unfulfilled state. So this is the type of uh, thinking that absurdist philosophers uh, undertook. And I think in some ways, you know, it's hard not to kind of understand it in our certain situation as we look around us and just shake our heads and try to figure out what is going on with this. Uh, how does any of this make sense? And where are we going to come out on the other side of this? All right. So at this point, I want to pause here and I'm going to ask you to uh, take a look at the YouTube video that talks about uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's uh, excuse me, Jean-Paul Sartre's work, um, No Exit. Uh, and it's from No Exit that we get the, the phrase, hell is other people. Uh, Sartre is an existential philosopher. He is um, closely associated with philosophical absurdism, closely associated with Camus from, from the plague. And uh, I think it's, as you watch this, we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, that phrase, hell is other people. And I think that is going to give us an opportunity to think about how we're responding to the current pandemic in ways that we might not have thought about uh, up to this point. So please take a look at that, uh, at that short YouTube piece, and then we'll come back and finish up by talking about this uh, notion that somehow hell is other people. 